Many times, two or more analysis classes are related to one another in some fashion or another. In UML, this is referred to as associations. With object-oriented code, we often ask if two classes are related or associated through an is a or has a type of relationship. For example, a car, an object, has a engine, another object. This shows that there's an association between the engine and the car. The engine helps make the car and it even helps describe the car, but it is not a car. On the other hand, a car, once again an object, is a type of vehicle, which is another object. The vehicle is a little bit more abstract, and from this abstraction you might find that you have a car which is inheriting to show some sort of type of parent-child relationship, not an attribute relationship. This inheritance from the vehicle could be further shown to work with things like motorcycles, semi-trucks, and even aircraft and boats. If an association has multiple objects related to another, it is referred to as a multiplicity. Consider a college class as an object for a minute. It has a teacher object, and there's usually only one teacher per college class. It will also have student objects, but multiple students will make up the class. Thus, this is a multiplicity situation. When building your classes, you need to know if there will be other classes that will help make it up, and if so, how will it do so? You also need to know how many of these objects will make it up. Now, sometimes the exact number is not known, and so you can often leave it open-ended. When you have classes dependent upon one another, you need to specify how they will interact between sharing data as well as any other forms of interaction that might occur. Consider our previous work example of an electronic employee time clock. An employee will need to interact with the time clock. While the employee is a user, it also needs to be represented as a class within the system to be able to keep track of their name, employee number, pay rate, etc. Then the time clock will create an entry as to when that employee with that employee's information clocks in and clocks out. Then, when a payroll type of class is implemented, it will be able to look at the employee and their pay rate as well as the time entries and then calculate how much they should be paid. As systems become more and more complex, the chances of interactions and shared data is going to increase. One place I worked at went through a complete overhaul of all of their backend applications. The sales team has something called a CRM, a Customer Relationship Management Application. This would track both current and potential customers. They had to know from our development team which products were currently available for sale. The accounting team had specialized software which had to know about those products and their prices so that they knew how much to bill the customer they got based upon the sales that the sale team made. The support team had to know which customers bought which products and if they had bought support for them so that they could either provide or deny product support based upon that information. On and on it went. So many interactions were found by the consulting team that they weren't expecting as this was just a portion of the groups that work with the different sets of data. Each had their own set of needs and their attributes that had to work with it. This is why it is so important to do your proper requirements modeling so that you can find all these interactions and you don't miss anything. Because if you miss something, your software will not work as intended.